Hello everyone, got the gamer skills here and welcome to the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, aka the Stanley Parable 2. Make sure you smash like button, smash the subscribe button, and let's get back to this game. So we played this before. But this game is just so fun. I love it. And I just wanted to play it again. So let's get into this. The end is never, the end is never, the end is never, the end is never. Okay. So. We're back All of his here. co-workers were gone. What could also, it mean? I want to do a, a Stanley thing. decided to go to the meet. Oh, please. Are you really just doing this yes. for the achievement? Click a door five times. Is that all that you think yes. an achievement is worth? No, 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 no. I can't just give these merits away for such little effort. A measly five clicks. Now, suppose you want? were to click the door 20 times. Okay. I would say that's the kind of effort that warrants recognition. Hmm. I have to say, I'm still not feeling the satisfaction of witnessing Come true on. effort for a noble cause. Perhaps 50 clicks will do it. Yes, Ooh. almost certainly 50 clicks. No, no, I'm, I'm still not feeling it. I, oh I my want this God, achievement to have meant something. So it has to be a, a true reward for valiant effort. I want to see some hustle, Stanley. I want to see commitment, a willingness to go all the way, no matter what the cost. Why don't you go put 20 clicks into okay, door okay, number okay. 417? Fine, I'll go. Oh, great. Now, go click a few times on door 437. Okay, fine. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Excellent. Let's go. I think we're getting somewhere. Now, door 415. Let's give it 10 clicks or so. Okay, let's go. 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 Quick, quick, quick. Um, where was it? I forgot. I'm forgetting everything. Oh, there it is. <clears throat> Now, yeah. back to door number 437. Okay, run, 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 run. Let's go, let's go, let's go. We're gonna do this, guys. Running, 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 running. Let's see. How about you click on, well, I don't know. Copy machine. The copy machine. All right, back to room 417. I'm really feeling it now. I think we're getting somewhere. Okay, let's go do this. Okay, now go climb on employee um, 419's desk. Okay. Yes! This is great! You're putting it all on the line, Stanley. I like that. All right, let's keep it up. Go give me a few clicks on door 416. Oh, my God. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Run, 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 run. We're running, we're running, we're running, we're running. We've almost got it! Now the copy machine, do that one again! Okay, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Let's do this. <clears throat> The copy machine. Finish it off, Stanley. Yes. Five clicks on door four three zero. Let's do this. Five. Yeah. Yes, we Lord. did it. Oh, wow. Give me that achievement. That felt amazing. Oh, you really earned it, Stanley. Nothing could hold you back. Yes, I'm very proud of how far we've come today. Just think, only a few minutes ago, you believed an achievement was worth five little clicks. Really now. What yeah, what thinking? was I thinking? That was way better. Now let's go. I've been in this office for too long already. Jumping on desks. Knocking on doors. Let's get out of here. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, yeah, so he entered the door so on his left. Actually, I really like this game, but the narrator keeps telling me what to do. I mean, he's not my boss. How can we find them? My favorite room ever. Let's get in. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. Okay. 
There was nothing here. No choice to make, no path to follow. Just an empty broom closet. No reason to still be here. Okay, I'll just be in here, you know, cleaning the broom closet. Not that clean anyway. It was baffling the door that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. <laughs> sweet F.A. What does that stand for? Are you, just are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some oh, explanation because it's my favorite here. I'm, room I'm in the game. I'm confused. I just gave you an explanation. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least she would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me oh, because yeah, literally it's boring, this though. closet I is like of it absolutely it's more no fun. significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. Let me just walk a bit. It's more Maybe fun in the room closet than outside. Yes. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom <laughs> closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friend Yes, the broom closet concerned. is my favorite. Guys, I'm gonna find the broom closet. Stanley was closet fat and ugly ending. and really, really stupid. He probably only well, got okay. the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That all Well, you drug didn't money. have to. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. Okay, well, you didn't have to pull that up. Well, I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom <laughs> closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical melody yes, we're of just some about sort to leave. shut oh, down I'm your dead. central nervous system Suddenly. and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby but there's no so one as to nearby. ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Yes. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. They have fallen <laughs> prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming, so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. Okay, fine. Ah, second player, it's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't do any worse than the person who came before you. You too? Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm at the mercy of an entire species of invalids. Perhaps there's a monkey nearby you can hand the controls to. A fish? Fungus? Look, you can hammer out the I details. Know. I'm not particularly picky. I'll just be waiting for when you're ready to pick up the story again. Okay. Let's go. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Let me just come down here for a second. Grab this. You're getting close now, Stanley. Let's you've go. You've gotten all of the Figler and Marines. Very soon, you'll oh, collect what? the last one. And then the first number will equal the second number. And that will be it. We'll be different people by then. Different in the sense that we used to have none of them. And now, we have them all. You can't go back to when you had no Figler and Marines. None of us can. Okay, sir. Staircase is still here. Let's go back upstairs. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Oh, I'm stunned unraveled, not to Stanley wondered in disbelief an who orchestrated this. An what dark secret was life. being held from him. What he could not have known 
was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number, 2845. But of course, Stanley what? couldn't possibly have known this. Oh, well, I can't possibly know it, so I'm going to walk away from there. Stanley just sat around twiddling his thumbs. Trying to input anything on the device was useless. Oh, yeah, I cannot know, know that the code that the combination was is 2845. Eight, four, five. Can't possibly know it, so I guess I'm just going to walk around here. 2845. If I knew the code. Oh, that's sad. I guess I don't know the code. Forgot, but it turns out that the panel's emergency override kicked in, and the door just <laughs> opened all by itself. Okay, and Stanley got the hell along with the story. Well, whoop de do. That was fun. Descending deeper into the building, Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Escape. Although this passageway had the word escape written on it, the truth was that at the end of this hall, Stanley would meet his violent death. The door behind him was not shut. Stanley still had every opportunity to turn around and get back on track. Wait, have I done this ending already? This I don't point, remember. Stanley was making a conscious, concerted effort to walk forward and willingly confront his death. What if I just go whoop? Ooh, I don't want to go there. Okay, fine, I'll go down. Let's go! And ow! That must have hurt. All right, guys, I Ocean, am back. And Stanley was inched closer and closer oh, no. to his demise. He reflected that his life had been of no consequence oh, no. whatsoever. Stanley can't see the bigger picture. He doesn't know the real story, trapped forever in his narrow vision of what this world is. Perhaps his death was of no great loss. Like well, this might be the end. So he resigned and willingly accepted this violent end to his brief and shallow life. Farewell, Stanley. Farewell, narrator. Oh uh, no, actually don't. Ow. Farewell, Stanley. That must have hurt. The narrator, as Stanley was led helplessly into the enormous metal jaws. In a single visceral instant, Stanley was oh obliterated as the machine crushed every bone in his body. Killing him instantly. Um. Okay. And yet it would be just a few minutes before Stanley would restart the game back in his office as alive as ever. What exactly did the narrator think he was going to accomplish? Oh, yes, he's when right. I'm just going to go here. Walk has been created for you long in advance, death becomes meaningless making life the same. Do you see now? 
Do you see that Stanley was already dead from the moment he hit start? <laughs> oh, look at these two. Don't laugh like How that. How they wish to destroy one another. How they wish to control one another. How they both wish to be free. Oh. Can you see? Can you see how much they need one another? No, I oh, cannot. Perhaps not. Sometimes these things cannot be seen. But listen to me. You can still save those two. You can stop oh. the program before they both fail. Push escape and press quit. There's no other way to beat this game. As long as you move forward, you'll be walking someone else's path. Stop now, and it'll be your only true choice. Whatever oh, what time, did I do? It. Don't let time. Okay, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. Oh my! I cannot believe that. get into the game again that was insane ever the end is never the end is never oh my god never lets me read in this game let's get out of here already all of his co-workers were gone yeah sure what could it mean stanley decided to go to the meeting room Perhaps he had simply missed. Stanley lifted the bucket into his arms, and a wave of comfort rushed over him. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. Fine. Okay, I'm back. Let's go. Oh, what? There will be a reward for finding all of them. This is new. Okay, I've been in here for a while. Let's go. Oh, Stanley. Can you feel it? The no. boom closet. It wants the bucket. You can feel that, can't you? The aura. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Wait, what was I doing again? Crushed by the weight oops, of this oops, 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 oops. I think I accidentally got the wrong. I accidentally did something wrong. Well, All let's go again. Why does the color change when I'm in this room, it looks like? No, oh, no, 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 not again. I won't be part of this. I'm not going to encourage you. I'm not going to say anything at all. I'm just going to be patient and wait for you to finish whatever it is you enjoy doing so much in this room. Please take your time. Okay. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Walk upstairs to my boss's office. Stepping in. Okay, let's go. So let's just retrace our steps into the blue room closet. Oh, now the nar narrator has nothing to say. Oh my. Trust the whatever that instinct is. Feels like an entirely different game when I'm playing it backwards. 
Actually, it kind of feels like the alpha, remember? Not the alpha, uh, what was it called? Unlike... Um, the Stanley Parable Alpha Test. Yeah, that's what it was called. So let's go into black. Nothingness. Why is it still black? What? Oh, I had to walk forward. Thank you for wait making me wait. I'm now leaving. Escape pod bay, floor 760. Okay. Oh, there's the office on the other side. Oh, this light is a bit darker. Okay. Wait a minute, that's the same number. I'm on the same floor. It's just this that's different. Okay, so we're just going to go in circles now. I'm going up an infinite staircase, but every time I go up, this number changes. Two more floors, and now it's just dark. Thank you. Escape pod launch bay. Okay, now what's going to happen? Now what's going to happen, narrator? Okay, nothing's happening. Oh, that's it. All you of his co-workers were serious. gone. What could it mean? You're Stanley not decided serious. to go to the. I'm going to quit back to the main menu. But there's nothing here. You know what, let's try and do, um, escape pod again, but let's take the bucket with us. What if we do it like that? I feel like it's going to be different because, um, there was a bucket ending. I didn't actually play it, but I know it exists because I saw it. I was watching this, um, game a little bit yesterday so i kind of know some of the endings this not all though so let's go all of his co-workers were gone what could yes what could it mean stanley decided just to go to the meeting room. This the confusion and the chaos all seemed to melt away as stanley embraced the bucket yeah stanley okay. clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left I mean, I didn't do what he said because he said, hold it close to your chest, but I didn't. I don't like how the colors change here, though. Or not the colors, the shade of it. Gets Coming a bit a staircase, more yellow. Like a yellow overlay. To the boss's office. You notice? Okay, let's do this now.
stepping in. Okay. Let's go back down here again. So let's just backtrack all the way back here. <clears throat> okay. Let's just go up now. Just a few floors to go up, I guess. Okay, now there's a cutscene. Oh, he doesn't want the bucket to go. It's not a live thing. He's he's do he's doing like don't you do that to pets? I mean, you can do it to anything, really, but you basically you basically are supposed to do it to pets to make them like you. It's I mean, you could go with the bucket. Just saying. Wait, is the bucket still there, though? I want to see if the bucket's still there. Okay, let's go and see if the bucket's still there. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley oh, decided to go gone. to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. So they act so the bucket's gone in the escape pod. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't Here. find a trace of his co-workers. The last thing I can do is go through go up the window. <sighs> Oh my god, this is hard. Oh, I kind of got on. Oh. I'm stuck. I don't know. This is hard. I need to get onto the computer. But I need to go fast for it. And I need a... But I didn't get on the computer.
Whoop. Hey. Eh. Okay, looks like here is the path to go. Oh, I didn't go. It's a balloon in my way. You know what? Let's not do that. Let's just do it later. Let's go back to the main menu. There should be something different. There should be a new option now that the button's gone. What? Oh, I think I need to get, um, all the Stanley figlies as well, figurines as well. So, uh, let's try and do that as well. I don't know where the last one is, but I think I know where the last one is, actually. <clears throat> this. So, let's go. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Oh, my co-workers are gone, Stanley that's okay. To to oh, the, the bucket's room. back. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Bucket. And try not to lose this one too, you dolt. Okay, okay, okay. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. This was not the correct Okay, I will go room. to the door on the left, the bucket you calling to him, Telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. The narrator has to close every door after and I go in, doesn't Had he? Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this... No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the so meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. No, go there. Stanley go to the cargo lift. Figurine is not there. Where is it then? Oh, I think I know. No, it's not there. Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets well, can't talk. But Stanley <laughs> chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. No, stop. Look there on the wall. You see, there's a sign right there. It says, no buckets past this point. Stanley, how I'm would you think it was now. okay to bring the... Let's begin the game again. Oh, wait, this isn't right. Why is the bucket over there? Wait. Warmth spread through Stanley's arms. With wait, the bucket what? in his arms again, he was home. Why is this different? Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Okay, fine, narrator. Oh, I hate this. Let's just sit here now. Oh, Stanley, can you feel it? Yes, the I can. The broom it. It wants the bucket. You can feel that, can't you? The aura of jealousy. It's as clear as day. This broom closet <laughs> believes it deserves the bucket. I can really feel it now. It's a bucket. It belongs in a broom closet. That's what well, the broom I don't really closet is trying to say here. It's supposed to go with the other cleaning honest. supplies. Good for you, Stanley. Don't give in. Don't hand over the bucket. I know how hard it must be, given the pressure that the broom closet is putting on your shoulders right now, but you have to be strong. This is your bucket. This is your companion and lifelong friend. You can't hand it over. Oh, no. We 
getting into name calling now, it seems. Is this how low the broom closet has sunk that it has to resort to this stream of petty insults simply Take in order to get bucket. you to hand over the bucket? Stanley, I never liked this broom closet for a variety of reasons. Oh well, you won't take the bucket if you won't have the bucket. And wait. Now the broom closet has the gall to imply that you and the bucket are not truly the deep and lasting shiny, friends. Though. That your Nothing relationship like. is purely superficial and convenient. Kind that your life is well. so banal and meaningless that you'd feel the same the sort of kinship towards already. any inanimate object which happened to lay in your path in an even partially enticing manner. Well, I never. Go on, Stanley. Lay into it. Really tell the broom closet off for its demeaning comments. Expand on the wide variety of experiences you and the bucket have shared together. Go through each of them point by point. Share your journal entries detailing the rich emotional landscape of your feelings for the bucket as they have changed and evolved over the years. Let him have it. Okay, I've got you something which I think will help settle this debate once and for all. Here we go. There. Now it's settled. Upper tea no more debate, Stanley. no more discussion. Take a hike, broom closet, with all your meandering philosophical diatribes about the nature of cleaning supplies and their relationship to broom closets in the natural order of things. All right, I've got a second sticker back here, and I'm going to slap it on as well cool. because I think it's appropriate. You well, see, if you just slapped I it on, how is it under it works the property the of Stanley? Is also a bucket. bucket. That way, if you're ever unsure whether the thing you're holding is a bucket or not, you can look down at this sticker and say to yourself, Ah, it's a bucket. There really is a wide variety of applications for this sticker. Okay, you know what? Let's go now. I could take the name calling and the dismissal of your kinship with the bucket, yeah, but now it. the broom closet is just giving us a coming to a staircase. Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Money in the morning, money in the evening, money for breakfast, money crisps. Okay, let's go. Oh. Okay. Oh, I can open this now. <gasps> Don't you dare kill that panda. I don't know. Okay, the bucket doesn't look that shiny anymore. But now it looks really shiny. Down here it just looks really shiny as well. But no, it's more reflecting here. The more shiny here. in the same place again. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. You know what? Let's by reset the this the revelation, set the game. Stanley may Already this was uncomfortable, and Stanley decided that as soon as he found a new space he felt safe in, that he would never leave it again, Stanley picked up the bucket and smiled. He'd never be alone again, not truly alone, not with the bucket around. Okay. 
Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? Yes, Stanley thought to himself. Yes, perhaps it truly was. How insightful the bucket turned out to be. No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go there. Go to the cargo. Yes, Good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly did whatever the bucket asked. In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Stanley once again obeyed blindly. Hey, now pick up the phone, that? said the bucket. Pick up the phone and it will take us back home, where we can go about life together. I'm gonna unplug you. I'm gonna oh, unplug you. Hold on, why did you unplug the phone? Because I wanted to. Were you to. trying to resist the bucket's orders? Stanley, I was joking. Obviously, the bucket isn't talking to you and telling you to do things. Buckets can't talk. It was a joke. Don't you get the joke? It's funny, Stanley. A talking bucket. Ah, can't you see? Oh, oh, goodness. I must have really bungled up the delivery if you actually took me seriously. Where did I mess up the joke? Should I have paused for longer or spoken quicker? Oh, comedic timing is so difficult. I wish I were better at it. But there isn't exactly an instructional video on comedy that oh, one can okay, watch okay. to fully... Oh, wait, yes, there is. Um, it's sitting right here. Let's take a look. Okay, 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 narrator. What is comedic timing? What is comedic timing? How does it work? How long should it last? How can it be used to effectively silence your political enemies? And more narrator, importantly, I think you can it be just... taught in its okay. entirety within 90 seconds? Thankfully, the answer to all of these questions is yes. Let's dive deeper. If you've ever told a joke or made someone laugh, in all likelihood, you did it while standing 50 to 80 centimeters from them in a room of no more than 76 degrees Fahrenheit with one of your arms raised straight upward at a 15 degree angle from your body. These are the optimal conditions for good comedic timing. To begin the joke, Start by stating and spelling your name. Next, provide a brief synopsis of the joke, including the specific times at which the recipient of the joke will laugh, and then spell out your name a second time. With these steps complete, it's time to begin the humor. Speak the entire joke in no more than 18 seconds and no less than 13 and a half, pausing only for bathroom breaks when necessary. When the joke has concluded, it is customary to inform your listener that the joke is over by declaring in your loudest possible voice, I'm Dunny with the funny. Let's practice screaming, I'm Dunny with the funny now. I'm Dunny with the funny. Okay, um, I said it. Can I move on? Can I? Good. This saying is a perfect example of expectations management, which is the cornerstone of good comedy. Finally, it's time to hand out surveys. Collecting hard data from your audience on how rapt they were throughout the joke is the only way to grow or learn as a comedian. An effective survey should be no less than 10 pages long and should include the same question reprinted several times. 
just to ensure the survey taker is actually paying attention and not simply filling in answers at random. And that's all there is. With these strategies at your disposal, you'll have audiences doubled over in laughter and even tripled over in laughter in no time at all. Just remember to let them stop laughing at some point, you gut-busting little scamp. After all, with each of us needed on the front lines of the war to fight the 12-legged invader who threaten our very existence, and to very likely die in a hailstorm of bullets and mandibles, all of us must be prepared to give our lives to this noble cause, just as our children must do after us, and their children after them. Godspeed, and may Earth reign supreme! Hey, goodness, this video is a little outdated, isn't it? Well, no matter. I think the fundamentals of proper comedic timing yes. are still as relevant today as they were back then. So with that in mind, I believe the only way forward is for us to return to the two doors and walk through all of this again so I can try telling my story with more appropriate comedic delivery. Come along, let's head back. Should I obey? Okay, fine. I can feel it. This time, I'm really going to nail the delivery. You'll be in stitches. A talking bucket, you'll say? How ridiculous. How absurd. What a hilarious concept. The king of comedy. That's what you'll call me. Thank goodness we have the instructional video. Otherwise, who knows where we'd be right now? Well, I wouldn't be the king of comedy, that's for sure. The bucket spoke to Stanley. Hmm. The bucket spoke. The bucket spoke. Oh, I'll figure it out on the fly. No need to overthink oh. things. Oh, guys, if you're wondering what this circle on the screen is, whenever I press the control key, it shows where my cursor is. Let me just show you. So, um, if you see this, um, um, don't get alarmed. Just saying. Okay. 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 Here we go. You ready? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> when okay. Stanley and the bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. Okay. No, 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 no. You were supposed to go through the door on the right, leading back to the phone. Did you not even look at the instructional video? I think this is all covered very clearly. There's no way I can make the comedic timing work oh, now. It's done. Here. The joke is completely done and over. Game. It's all okay. your fault, Stanley. Wait. I'm going to be ridiculed in the community of other joke writers. I'm going to be shamed at every one of our meetings from now on. All because you couldn't watch a simple video and take a hint. Wait, wait, Are you proud of yourself for being I thought down, Stanley? Are you... Oh. Here we go. You ready? <clears throat> when Stanley and the bucket came to a set of two open doors, they entered the door on the left. Fine, I'll go to the right. It's black room. Well, uh, we're back at the phone already. No, no, no. What's going on? There were supposed to be several rooms leading up to this. There was supposed to be a build-up to this point. A dramatic display of remarkable comedic wit which culminates in this scene with the phone. But now the timing's completely off. The joke will never land. Well, not the way it was meant to. And it's all my fault. I must have forgotten that the phone room comes immediately after the two doors room. What an egregious mistake. I've made a fool of myself. I don't deserve the title of King of Comedy. I'm nothing. I'm not even the lowliest joke well, I think, I think I need to go back and rewatch that instructional video again. Yes, surely that will help me improve my... Oh. Stanley, you love the bucket so much, it's like you... Um, it's as though all of your other most prized possessions pale in comparison. Yes. Hmm? Well, let me try that again, Stanley. I remember this. I heard that you are pale with shame. Hey, oh, Stanley. I'm in love with a bucket you are. No, still not. It, it is a delivery. Pale with shame. Pale with shame. Pale. 
What another word to describe a bucket? Tell me, this bucket is so mental. I think I saw it playing guitar. No, 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 no. We're getting away from making fun of Stanley's obsession with the bucket, which was the whole point of this. I just, I'm no good at these jokes. I need more mm. instructional videos. Okay, I'm just going to move That's what will make me a casino comedy again. More instructional and videos. Let's see. Let's Stanley, let's go. Okay, I'm now controlling Stanley again. Let's just quit to the main menu now. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Stanley went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make <laughs> it the good old bucket. Just Stanley and the bucket, off on another thrilling adventure together. A what? Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Should I? Mm -hmm. This was not the correct way to the meeting room. But Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. Okay, Mr. Bucket. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this... No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back to the meeting room. And so the two of them detoured through the maintenance section and walked straight ahead to the opposite door. Down. Uh, this is the right way, definitely. Oh, good Stanley. I'm glad you found your way here. I knew you'd find this place eventually. Oh, what? You see, your friends and I are concerned for you, Stanley. We've come together here because we care about you very it's much. Statue. It's this bucket you're it's carrying around everywhere. Baby. The bucket isn't even from the original Stanley Parable. It's just sequel and it's the content. Adventure line. We're the ones that matter, Stanley. Classic characters from the first game, like the Adventure Line and the Broom Closet. It's the broom because closer. that's what fans want from a sequel. They want more of their favorite jokes, not this bucket that they've never seen before. Yes, I know I'm the one who gave you the bucket, but you're spending too much time with it. Don't you want another story involving it's the adventure line? We could make the adventure line go somewhere new. Yes, yes, that's what the fans want. Let's do it. Whee! 
Look at that wacky line. Who oh. knows where it'll go off to next? Oh, and it played some silly music as well. Hey, let's go. Now this is what the Stanley Parable is all about. Don't you remember all those great Stanley jokes from the Parable. original dialogue? Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. <laughs> yes. It's as classic now as it was back then. Let's no, do it for the fans, Stanley. Not. Let's give them more content exactly like this. But if we want to do that, you're going to have to give something Let's up. go down. Don't you get it, Stanley? We need to get rid of the bucket. That's why I'm very proud to introduce a brand new character. This is the Bucket Destroyer. Oh. I think it'll make a wonderful new addition to the rich lore of the Stanley Parable. True, it also was not in the original game, but it's such a well-fleshed-out character with so much personality that to me, it already feels as though it's been part of the cast all along. Don't you agree? Can you guess what the Bucket Destroyer does? Surely you don't need me to spell it out for you. Go ahead now, Stanley. Say goodbye to the bucket, and then pop it into the machine when you're ready. Now listen to me. It's crucial that you give it the bucket. I don't know what the bucket destroyer will do if it can't destroy your bucket. Destroying buckets is all it knows. That is its singular personality trait. Sure, I can hear you saying, how does a character with only one personality trait deserve to join the pantheon of beloved Stanley Parable characters? Well, you see, if you were to really explore the Bucket Destroyer, you'd see that its desire to crush buckets is so densely loaded with complexity and nuance that it's really like ten personality traits. What other object in this game can you even say that about? The broom closet? Certainly not. I wonder what sort of Bucket Destroyer merchandise the fans will be clamoring for after this. Okay, the Bucket Destroyer is getting very upset now. You'll have to hurry and feed it. We can't get back to the classic Stanley Parable characters like the Adventure Line or the Bucket Destroyer until you crush that damn bucket. Quickly now, the fans are waiting. Do it, the fans, Stanley. Give the fans what they want. Hurry and crush. I uh, know I didn't crush the bucket. <laughs> the Bucket Destroyer, my prized creation. You had so much potential. We were going to do such marvelous things with you, tell such spell-binding stories about you, all of it squandered now. Goodbye, new friend. For the moment <laughs> in time that you were here, you were <laughs> magnificent. <laughs> Honestly, I don't really care about the bucket in the game. The meeting room. Yes, that's where everyone would be. What? Stanley just needed to get to the meeting room, and from then on, he would never be alone okay, ever so, again. Okay, so, but give me a second. I'm trying to do something. I need to look for the last Stanley Parable figurine. Where are we going today? The bucket asked. Stanley just smiled. Anywhere they went together would be perfectly fine. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Wait, let me just pause for a second. Have we gone everywhere we could go? On the left, I think let's go on the right. This was not the correct way to the meeting room. But Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. 
And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was it? No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took the door on his left to go back and set Let's the look here. detour through the maintenance section. There's no triggering. To the opposite door. Okay. Stanley, we must move on from this broom closet simply because I have no remaining stickers. If I did, you can okay. guarantee we'd be in here. Coming to a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. To be rich, is it a crime to commit crimes? Isn't it rich? What if a life would what what a life it would be to have to have to pick one just one huh business strategies Stepping in the okay. office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light pierce the dark clouds of confusion and chaos. It would be with him always. The bucket would, and he knew it. But Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation. Let's go. <clears throat> okay. elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. I can go back up again. Things broken. What if we go back up? Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read Mind Control Facility. Oh, no, 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 no. Run, 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 run. Wait, I can crouch. I crouched. Go back. Wait, Stanley said to the bucket. Can we go back up? When I was pressing those keypad buttons, there was something very intriguing about the number three. I want to go back so I can try pressing the number three again. The bucket said nothing. <laughs> okay, let's go back up so we can hear about the number three. Are, said Stanley. Now I'm going to try out that number three button. He took the bucket over to the keypad and began absolutely slamming on the number three over and over and over. Wow, he said. The number three is such a special button. I'm having the time of my life. 
Stanley looked expectantly at the bucket, but the bucket remained silent. This was a shock to Stanley, who had always felt such a connection with the bucket. How was this not as exciting to the bucket as it was to him? Once Stanley had had enough of the number three, he got back in the elevator. Okay. Perhaps the bucket had missed something. Perhaps it had not seen how much joy Stanley got from slamming the number three repeatedly. said Stanley to the bucket. You can't go on yet. Not till you understand how much the number three means to me. You and I have been through so much together and I just want you to see what I see. Feel the happiness I feel. He smiled at the bucket and the bucket said nothing. Okay, let's go. Here we go, said Stanley. This time I'll really show you. He ran to the number three and began to wail on it like a musician on a beloved instrument, weaving a concerto of truth and passion. He wielded the number three like a fine artist would wield a paintbrush. He told stories through the number three. Stories of his on dreams it. and hopes and fears. And the whole time, he looked to his bucket for a reaction of some kind. Anything to let him know that the bucket appreciated what he was doing. The bucket conveyed absolutely nothing at all. Only silence. Crushed by a wave of dejection, Stanley returned to the elevator. Okay, let's go. <clears throat> Stanley and the bucket were so close, they'd always been there for one another. Why suddenly could the bucket not connect with this passion of Stanley's? The question caused Stanley to ruminate the whole way down the elevator. He knew that there must be a way to get through to the bucket, to communicate fully with his dear friend. Surely there was a solution, mustn't there be? Okay. Let's go up again. I know how to fully express this feeling in my heart. He decided right then and there that he would hold a press conference where he would speak to the public on all matters relating to pressing the number three over and over. He would elaborate fully on what the number three meant to him and why he felt Wait, so alive that? when pressing it. Then the bucket would be able to see his joy through the eyes of others. It would get to see the world react to this Oh my god, I thought standards. I saw something. And it would be through the public eye that the bucket would finally oh, understand Stanley's work. Stanley. For months, he advertised and marketed his press conference, building excitement around it, developing and rehearsing it until stage. it couldn't be refined a single measure further. Wait, what was when that? the big day arrived, Stanley was as well, prepared as he'd stuff. ever been for anything in his life. We just care about the number three. Stage door. To stage three, 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 three. I'm not gonna read all of that. Oh. 
This was it. One last chance to win the bucket over. One opportunity to share a true connection with a loved one. There was no one here. Nobody had come to the press conference to hear Stanley speak, to listen to him talk about what it really means to press the number three on a keypad over and over. He was unloved, uninteresting, he was a failure. And in that moment, Stanley knew that the bucket would never again take him seriously. There would be no connection, no deeper understanding. The bucket merely sat there in his arms, indifferent. And so it began that slowly, over many years, the two of them grew more and more distant. They spoke less and less, neither wishing to state the obvious that any sense of real respect between them had eroded since that okay. day at the press conference. There, there would be, be no more games, so no more long conversations so about passion and pursuit. Only a silence that consumed the space between friends. And Stanley, having for once in his life discovered the warmth and comfort of true companionship, was cast back into the unremarkable normalcy of loneliness. Okay, then what was that all about? Wait, what did that say? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly yes, well. Yes, this is not Perhaps the correct way. Perhaps he wanted way. to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire. Okay. Stanley felt lightheaded, butterflies in his stomach, giddy in a way he had never known before. Was it this room? But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. She's been... Okay, let's begin the game again. Oh, what? All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Why is this Stanley different? decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. A good bucket. 
A strong bucket, a humble bucket, a committed bucket, a bucket of culture and... Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. Where should I go to? I'm thinking. Let's go this one. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, but Stanley had felt the bucket calling to him, telling him that the employee lounge was simply the place to be. And here it was. Had the bucket turned out to be correct? Was this better than the meeting room? Yes, Stanley thought to himself. Yes, perhaps it truly was. No, never mind. The bucket was wrong. Stanley took okay. the door and left to go back Let's to the go. meeting room. No, said the bucket. Don't go to the meeting room. Go somewhere else. The cargo lift, yes. Go th good, said the bucket. Now ride the lift all the way to the top. There's something up there I need you to do. Stanley did not question why or how this bucket was speaking to him. It should have alarmed him, of course, because buckets can't talk. But Stanley chose not to think about this obvious fact. He was firmly convinced that the bucket had spoken to him, and he unthinkingly oh, did whatever what? the bucket asked. When I press two mouse buttons, it makes me walk. I never knew that. In here, said the bucket. Go into this dark room over here. Stanley once well, again I don't have obeyed to use blindly. my key. Uh, no, I'm gonna still use WASD. Now pick up the phone, said the bucket. Pick up the phone, okay. and it will. I picked up the phone. This is the sad story of a man named Stanley and his bucket. Once upon a time, I gave Stanley a bucket because I thought he was lonely and could use a friend. And then, very distressingly, he began to believe the bucket could speak to him. Okay, let's press this again and again because I feel like it. Okay, fine, let's go. Ooh, is this my house? This is nice. Can't open that door. Jazz music. Look at this kitchen, okay? Hello, Stanley, it's me, your bucket. Press L to take me to work with you. The Stanley Parable Reassurance Bucket was merely meant to provide the comforting glow of companionship. It doesn't literally talk and give you orders. Whatever Stanley is hearing the bucket say to him is just in his head. Press G to take me back home with you. Lately, I've been concerned about him. Wouldn't you be concerned as well? To see the him bucket. delusional like this, obsessing over an inanimate oh. metal object? I want to say something to him, but I don't know how I can convince him. I don't know if he'll listen to me. Okay. Well, I'll try anyway. Stanley, can you hear me? Listen to me. It's just a bucket. It can't think. It can't talk. All it will ever truly do for you is effectively transfer a liquid from one location to a different location. That's it. It doesn't do anything else. Okay. You oh see, God. he's not listening. He's still taking orders from the bucket. You know, once upon a time, it was me he took orders from. Me, he trusted and listened to. Now all he cares about is his awful bucket. His stupid hunk of metal. It's sad. I suppose he doesn't need me anymore. From now on, he's just going to cling to this bucket, this cold, empty bucket, this sort of shiny bucket. Hmm. Well, I'll give it this. The bucket does have a nice shine to it. Yes, that's what I was saying the entire time. Yes, I suppose on closer inspection, but it doesn't quite okay. look like your average hardware store bucket. 
It's just a little more... Um, what am I trying to say? Sturdier. More capable of transporting liquid. Like it would be better at moving an amount of water from one like room to another. Oh my god, what am I saying? Better at carrying water from room to room. It's a bucket. It's literally just a bucket. Why do I feel some need to point out yeah, the ways in which it's so much more than just a regular bucket? Um, I go to lose the chair. Oh no, I'm oh. I'm having feelings. What? The bucket. Oh, this is the no, 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 no. What's going on? Why do I want to be with the bucket? Like Hear what the bucket has to say. Do anything it asks. What's wrong with me? I don't understand. Perhaps, perhaps, if I had the bucket, this would be less confusing. Yes. The bucket could tell me what to do in this troublesome situation. Stanley, give me the bucket. Give no. it to me. Give me the bucket, Stanley. No. I need it. Give it to me now. Give it or I'll... Close my eyes. Oh my god, this bucket's taking over my life. Well, now what is the bucket going to do? Bucket, what are you going to do? If you can hear me, what are you now going to do? I don't think he can hear me. Yeah, the narrator was right. It's just a bucket. Oh, what? Let's go back to the main menu. Have we finally gotten the new uh, selection thing? No. Credits. Do we have to boot up the game again? I'm gonna boot up the game again, guys. Okay, I rebooted the game. There's no option. Okay, you know what? I'm going to try and get a, a bunch of different endings now because clearly this is going to take a long time. So, this Let's go now. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply Bucket. missed a memo. Ah, the embrace of an old friend. A weathered companionship that stands the test of time. Stanley clutched the bucket tightly to his chest and entered the door on his left. To a staircase, Stanley and the bucket walked upstairs to the boss's office. Okay, I'm back. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Crushed by the weight of this revelation, Stanley may have broken down into an emotional dumpster fire if not for the soothing presence of the bucket. Even now, in his darkest of hours, did the bucket's warmth and guiding light but Stanley guessed the correct code by sheer luck. Was it that the bucket knew all along? Was the bucket guiding him? Yes, this is certainly the most logical explanation.
loading, 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 loading. Okay, let's wait for this loading, 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 loading. The elevator raced downward, plummeting towards an unknown fate. It would be all Stanley could do to keep himself together, if not for the bucket. Soothing him, comforting him, reassuring that in this darkest moment of uncertainty, he would be all right. The bucket is here for you, Stanley. Everything will be fine. Stanley and the bucket walked straight ahead through the large door that read, Mind Control Facility. Let's just go and do this one. So we have the bucket with us. Let's turn the lights The on. lights rose on an enormous room packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley and the bucket both wondered to themselves. The monitors jumped to life and Stanley nearly dropped the bucket in shock. Everyone okay, in on, the office on, was on, being on, videotaped, on, 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 monitored on, like on, guinea pigs. On, the bucket had never seen anything like this, and it very nearly burst into tears as Stanley cradled it gently, reassuring it that everything would be fine. Was the bucket under the mind control facility's influence as well? Had the bucket been told to do things it didn't wish to do? What kinds of things does a bucket want to do or not want to do in the first place? These questions raced furiously in Stanley's feeble mind. Oh, wow. <laughs> no! He screamed into the bucket. He couldn't accept it. His own life in someone else's control? Never! He squeezed the bucket tighter, his one friend in the entire world. At this point, he could trust no one except for the bucket. But here was the proof, the heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions, happy or sad or content. Walking, eating, working, all of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley okay, decided like that this machinery my, would my never idea. again exert Let's its terrible it. power on. over another... But at the last second, the bucket jumped in and pressed the button to turn on the controls. Stanley gasped in horror. Had this been the bucket's plan all along? To take over the machine and claim the power for itself? How could the bucket have betrayed him like this? Stanley was prepared to throw the bucket away in disgust when suddenly an image appeared upon the enormous screen. Birds. Silly, silly birds. The control buttons became active again. Yeah, who needs freedom when we've got birds? Silly birds. Woo! Stanley flipped through one video of silly birds after another. And then it dawned on him. Nice. This wasn't a mind control facility at all. It was a facility Ooh. for monitoring and surveilling silly birds all over the world. The mind controls were only a facade to disguise its true intentions. Had the bucket known this all along? Stanley marveled at the metal genius in his hands, the one who had pointed him towards this incredible discovery. Stanley and the Bucket never found freedom because they spent the rest of their lives here in this place, flipping through live streams of the silliest birds imaginable. Of all the possible paths his life could have taken, this one was surely yes, the best. the best. And Stanley was happy. They Ever the end is never the end is never the end is loading nav. Never the end is never the end is never the end is never the end is loading never.
with me. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps. So, let me just check one more time. Okay, guys, I'm gonna search up how to get the um other um option. Give me a second. Okay, I have no internet right now, so I'm gonna leave it there. Make sure you smash like button, smash the subscribe button, and bye for now.